I have not decided on how uncomfortable I'm willing to be on top of the stool. No clue if this is a good idea or not yet. Well, I do in fact own a swivel chair. We might just run the swivel chair play. My name is Sabri and I just listened to Sam Smith's album, Gloria. I have some thoughts. This is Sam Smith's fourth studio album. I thought it would be special to start by reviewing Sam Smith's album. The Lonely Hour, and it's crazy how long it's been since that album's been out. You know, there was a lot of things going on for me, teenage first times. Really got a connection with me there. And to be honest, I haven't really connected with his albums like that in a while. Um, I was really intrigued and I had a couple expectations, but mostly I was just like, you know, give him a shot. This is me for my editing bay, also known as a couch. I didn't know that before shooting this video that Sam Smith had been going by they, them since 2019. And that is my bad on me for any times that uh, I may slip up and misgender them in the video. And so for the album, we start off with a track Love Me More. And Jimmy Napes was one of the longtime producers that's worked with Sam Smith, you know, behind this track in particular. Um, a very sort of sunny, laid back, Sunday morning kind of, kind of laid back pop track. You know, you've got, you know, Charlie Puth's uh, See You Again comes to mind, Sunday morning, Maroon 5 comes to mind. It's a very easy listen. There's a lot of tracks on here that are very easy listens, partially because of Sam Smith's godly voice but also just because um you know consistency of producers which you'll usually see and count on from a sam smith album he touches on the theme of self-worth we go to another track like no god which is um a little darker in character you know it's uh, it's a little more accusatory um it's interesting and just as far as like an emotional range this uh it gives like more of like an Aaliyah destiny's child sort of like um you know jenny Jenny from the Block kind of vibe, one of the tracks that I, I really enjoyed. We Go To Lose You, which um, I definitely like, more dance oriented. Um, and just for the pace and energy, I really liked it. I, I liked, you know, thinking back to Sam Smith's uh, La 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 Naughty Boy uh, collaboration. And, you know, it's good, good, uh, good blood pumping song. Then we get to Perfect. This is where we get introduced to Jesse Reyes. Um, as one of the collaborators on this album. She makes probably at least two more appearances. Um, and unfortunately, Perfect is, isn't, it's a track where Jesse Reyes is there. And I like Jesse Reyes as an artist. She doesn't really add anything. And uh, Sam Smith could have done his part for the rest of uh, the verse. And I think part of the hook that, that Jesse Reyes jumped on um, she didn't really add that much, but it's, you know, it's a very, um, you know, unoffending track. Um, but that's where we start to see Jesse. When we get to Unholy, which as a single, I enjoyed the hell out of. The real blood pumping, but also not very dance, or at least not, not house oriented. I'm not going to say it's not dance oriented. And, um, just the whole publicity with Sam, um, showing up in that incredible dress you know it's it's all for all for the dramatic but it was funny because when i heard it here it just seemed really out of place like i it just seemed weird like i was saying with um with the third track the album was rolling along and you have unholy which i think you know deserves as much attention as it has gotten but as far as album sequencing just um I don't know, it just seems sort of startling. Six shots is great, um, but if you didn't have Unholy here, it feel better as an album list. And Gimme comes in, again with Jesse Reyes, probably needing about 13 less Gimmies than I would have wanted. I don't know if you remember back in the day, but where they would have these compilations or they, they'd have this counter where like, oh, you know, this song said baby X time. Oh, it's just, it's unbearable. Look what pop music is doing around 16 times that's one hook you could have just had it you know just like a rhythmic kind of motif kind of thing you're like gimme 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 and you could have had a more you know just a, a more sort of a light dance club hit also i totally get that like when we shake and booty like no one cares and i don't care 
come bully me immediately a bit irritated but i mean you know this is a, a decent pop song coffee rock to us um haven't gotten to check her out yet but she you know she rocked that thing she she did it um and hoping to hear some more vibes hoping i'm glad i got to be introduced to her and then sort of flowing from the pace of you know straight r&b to pop records a mix of those uh records on this album but approaching the end of the album we go into i'm not here to make friends club knocking um you just got a good set of energy at the end then we go on to gloria which um surprised me i liked um it was interesting sam smith's not the only um artists and the you know the producers that work behind them aren't the only producers that may be guilty of it when they use a whole choir to give a different texture to what the track is giving in this sense though glory is different because it does have a full choir but it's not it's not a church choir it's not a modern choir it's um it's not like well, as old as gregorian chant but you know sort of like uh i guess you would you would call elizabethan kind of uh kind of vibe and you got sam smith soaring and doing his thing over it and I was surprised because it's short too. It's basically a cappella. We we're also fortunate enough to have had this um, as a representation through an SNL performance that we had actress Sharon Stone. And it's, uh, it's this crazy outpouring of emotion that, you know, took me a little bit by surprise. And then we go on to the album Closer, which is Who We Love, a frankly beautiful ballad between sam smith and ed sheeran who of course is um years removed from his wedding reception hits perfect and thinking out loud um it's an interesting marriage two different artists that are sort of at least romantically in different places in their lives but um you know even ed sheeran um in the context of them uh, both meeting for this, uh, talking about the inevitable, you know, inevitability of love. Um, uh, you know, Ed Sheeran talks about seeing a wedding band. Good song of imagery of just uh, you know, giving into love. And it was a um, beautiful album closer that I'm surprised. Um, I'd be surprised if it doesn't get um, as, you know, more attention. I think it um, has a potential to be you know another one to hit charts as uh you know same caliber as a thinking out loud or a perfect uh hit ed sharon single a good track from two uh you know at this point seasoned artists good emotional close to the album Alrighty, so here i have my closing thoughts for the album gloria and i wanted to do them here since i originally had a set of closing thoughts that I think honestly took the album way too seriously, though I think I can do two things at once and comment on what the album is not and take that seriously instead. I think it's appropriate to call Sam Smith the veteran artist, even though he's just now crossing 30, though his debut album is almost 10 years back and he's four albums in and in a lot of ways it's hard to tell. Not every album is made with tons of conspiracy. Um, even when it's backed by these huge chart-topping international artists, uh, talented artists. A lot of times I think it just comes down to um, the people that you surround yourself when it comes to going back to Jimmy, um, Calvin Harris, James Napier, um, and the, the purpose that you think, frankly, an album has whenever you're making it. Um, I'm not undermining the ability for this to be a feel-good record. Sam Smith also talks about in interviews the tribute to Gloria not being a tribute to any particular person but more a tribute to a feeling, to um, unbridled joy. You know, that title track accomplished that, I messed with that. But a lot of times it feels like he's going through a cycle, you know, that can be due to going to the same people um there's no album sequencing because it's not organized well you know these things are actually sometimes not very complicated when it comes to you know mentioning the cycle it's like 
artists are growing around him and he's performing as if in a constant slump or this endless vogue. Having gone back through the catalog, The Thrill of It All was an album that I did give a little bit of attention to at the time and was glad to see. Um, Love Goes, I think, was probably his best as far as the organization of the album, um, the diversity of the kind of sounds on there, and the way that he uses uh, emotions and his voice um, with this one I just feel like there was a lot that was not there that could have been there and there I leave you now with my last thoughts on Gloria um, I would hope you do like and subscribe if you do want to hang around and push me to review more of these releases um, I thought this was really fun and going through Sam Smith's album I think also let me look at myself too um, so, you know, uh, hopefully I get to do more of these things.